we are starting to see some great games come back to the Mac. But this is one of the coolest I've ever seen. This game is going to ship early next year from Bungie. And this is the first time anybody has ever seen it. It's the first time they've debuted it. I still have memories of getting to 343 Guild Spark and encountering the Flood. I was playing in the basement and it was dark out, very quiet, and all of a sudden you get introduced to the Flood. And it was just, it was just the perfect setting to, for, for that kind of adrenaline moment. The experience overall, I think, of the original Halo is just something super, super special. You're thrown into this alien world, just kind of drops you in. I was like hooked at that point. I'm a big believer in that Halo Sandbox is what makes it special. It's actually a very intelligent game. The idea that you can just take one thing in that sandbox and change it, and it changes your whole mindset of how you want to go about and do something, was pretty influential on in me just messing with uh, the game on the PC. As so long as there is interest, even if it's just one person tinkering on a thing, I think it's, it's going to continue. The Halo modding community you don't find anything else like that anywhere else in the world. When I was probably 11 or so, I had just gotten like you know my first computer and uh, I knew Halo 1 for the PC existed and that it had additional maps. Um, and soon after that, I realized there was an editing kit that I could make my own custom maps and have other people that I knew in the community play with them. Uh, that was something I was really interested in doing. And, you know, on my dial-up modem, I was able to download, like, the editing kit, and I got into the modding community, and I was probably 13 or 12 at the time, and that's when I got started. Well, Halo's been part of my life for about 15 years now. I started playing it early 2004, though, I had first been introduced to it a little bit earlier, but wasn't really that into it until I really got invested with it. Actually, probably late 2003. The minute I had the ability to alter stuff, it was like, oh, this is cool. Because on the Xbox, I had done stuff like, well, can you get through the entire mission with just the pistol? Can you go through assault in the control room without the rocket launcher and sniper or vehicle? That's the type of stuff that I like to do. So when I could finally mess with stuff on the PC, it was like, well, what if you made the assault rifle play differently? What if you replaced all the grunts on the pillar of autumn with elites and just made it really hard? What if you just up the speed to like five times and just zipped around? What if you can get the ghost to operate here instead of a warthog on the selling cartographer? We had these mapping groups that would make custom maps and they would all work together and they had their basically own brand and identity. And uh, we were the TM mapping team, which didn't stand for anything, but that's who we were. Back in the early days of CE, everybody was an MT something. There was the SMT for Sonic Mapping Team, CMT for Coagulation Mapping Team, and there had been another mod team that Cornman was part of, uh, Sean Cooper, or Scoops as he's now known. Before Custom Edition re was released, I remember coming, coming across, I think, a, uh, it was some game developers conference or some sort of related uh, conference that one of the Halo devs uh, had slides for, some, some talk they gave. So there was uh, some screenshots of uh, one of their content editors. It kind of showed like, hey, this is these are all the fields you have for editing uh, the dialogue, the unit dialogue. Uh, so that was like kind of like a, a brief touch on what to, what was expected to come from for me at least. The modding I was used to was console modding in terms of using Game Shark or Game Genie, or uh, I think there was Pelican Bay slash Action Replay um, at the time. And I was really holding out for like uh, like a Game Shark or an Action Replay for uh, the Xbox. And then Action Replay did release something. It was a uh, a USB converter that uh, you could plug in a memory stick for the Xbox and put your your game saves on that, and then plug that into your PC. Uh, and that's how I started looking at Halo. And that, that's what kind of got me interested. Like, well, how is this how is this game made? Like, uh, how is it? What logic is it running? Uh, what, what's a scripting look like? Uh, so that's kind of like what's planted the seed uh, in, in uh, terms of getting me into Halo modding. Probably like early uh, 2002 or so. And it wasn't until like uh, Halo PC, like say, came out that I started actually uh, trying to mod the game code and uh, game content outside of the game save.
So I had been following the Halo modding scene when it was still just Halo PC, when you just had very basic tools for modding. Halo Custom Edition, or rather what was currently announced at the time by Gearbox, was that an editing kit would be released for the PC version of Halo. So it would turn out they had to fork a separate version of the game off, which became Custom Edition. New Mombasa Classic was like the big, hotly anticipated mod, or well, rather map at the time, because mods were still uh, very basic, people are still trying to figure out the tools. When Gearbox gave us Bungie's tools, they didn't give us much documentation. It was basically, here's how you import a level, here's how you add a sky, here's how you compile, and that's it. Doing new animation in Halo CE, like, not entirely possible. You could do some stuff, but not everything you would want to do. Edit the scripts in the map, not possible. All you could do was swap references around and add new references in. I wasn't expecting it to be as difficult, as it was, or as different as the other tools we had out at the time. So it took a long time before people were able to figure out how to do more stuff with it. It was a lot of trial and error. There are some fields that, uh, by default, you couldn't edit. And I was like, well, I'm a modder, I want to edit all the fields. Even if I don't know what I'm doing, I want to edit all the fields because I'm crazy. And so, well, that was like one of the things I first set out. I was like, how do I unlock these fields uh, that other people may want to also edit? I uh, used a tool called Ida Pro uh, to decompile like the, the, the editor code and the game code and started get a, getting a sense of what was uh, going on in the engine. The Halo Custom Edition scene was mostly, it started out mostly on Gearbox's uh, forums. Uh, there's a guy on there, went by the uh, moniker Bitter Banana, and he messaged me and just was like talking about like, hey, let's, let's do a, what they call a, a DirectX hook. And this is how we started to add new functionality to the game clients. One of the first things I recall was kind of like a, a Gary's mod, uh, where you have a gravity gun. It's just like you kind of point at a, uh, a tank or some other object, and you'd grab it and be able to move it around. First thing I made was a multiplayer map. It was a giant square and uh, had one big hill, and it was promptly named Big Hill. And then the second version of it was Big Hill AI, which had, you know, like 10,000 elites running around in it or something. But to me, that was, that was amazing. I made a couple notable multiplayer maps that were pretty widely received. One was called Garden, and another one was called Aquarii. And those two maps uh, share a very similar aesthetic. And I think those were, when I finished working on multiplayer stuff, that's where I sort of ended it. And I was very happy with those two final creations being some of my final stuff I did for multiplayer in Halo Custom Edition. And those two were pretty big. Um, the gameplay was widely received and the visuals I think everybody really enjoyed. At this time in Halo Custom Edition, you were lucky if there was like 200 people online. Now there's thousands. But when it first came out, there would be like 50 to like 200 people online at a time. I think around the time Brothers in Arms came out, Gearbox had put the Halo CE forms down further below on their the uh, landing page and that kind of drove traffic away. We were gonna basically save Halo CE, which at that time was about to lose any support from Gearbox software because it had such a low player count. And they said, we'll only give you a patch if you get it to a thousand players. The fabled, oh, if there's a thousand people playing, we'll do another update. And it just never happened. Uh, and I think they just wanted to move on with their, their own games. So I think uh, it was just a, a time for them to move on. And it became a time for the Halo Custom Edition modding scene to move on as well. It was like around 2006 um, is when I joined the army. And so I was pretty quiet. You know, I was in basic for the better part of uh, six or eight months. So I wasn't active doing any modding like that. But then I got to go to my first, first base. And that's when I was able to have time to pick things back up again and uh, started working. I forget if we, it was, it was called Project Yellow originally, but we later renamed it Open Sauce because uh, the idea was to have this open source um, modification of Halo Custom Edition engine, both the clients, the dedicated server, and all the tools. I actually wasn't introduced to Halo 1 first. I, one of my best friends, his name's Kurt, went over to his house and we played Halo 2. And uh, I was like hooked at that point. I needed to get an Xbox. 
I started to get in touch with a lot of people that were like modding Halo more more seriously, I guess you could say. That's where the Halo 2 Custom Edition team formed. And that was a team that was working on Halo 2 content for Custom Edition before Halo 2 itself even launched. So we had a version of Zanzibar in Custom Edition before Halo 2 uh, was released. If you go on BungieNet, they interviewed the team. I forget what the terms you want to search for on Google. It's like H2CE interview or something like that. In the Halo Custom Edition community, you'll notice that a lot of people have differing opinions on Halo 2, uh, not only because of its controversial single player, but also because of how it was handled for the PC port. And it's funny because the narrative now is that Halo 2 was this great game that everybody loved, and people were certainly hyped for it. And everybody wanted to like it, but especially in the Halo CE community, people were not happy with it. And that's actually probably one of the biggest reasons that Halo CE took off, because all of us people who didn't like how Halo 2 was, and we all flocked the Custom Edition, and we started making our own maps, and we started making our own mods. Things started to move off of uh, Gearbox's forms to halomaps.org. Dennis, the guy that uh, runs that, he has a whole bunch of maps you can download. Uh, it's, a, it's a very large archive of Halo Custom Edition maps, Halo 2 Vista maps, that's been around since, I think, shortly around the time that things started to move off of uh, Gearbox's uh, own forms. At the same time, another man named Steelix B, uh, Ben was his name, he created a tool that would actually take content out of Halo PC and turn it into an editable format for Halo Custom Edition. Because when Halo Custom Edition launched, it was only for multiplayer. There was no idea that people would be doing campaign stuff. They even removed the campaign from the UI. The multiplayer was always an added bonus for me, not the reason why I bought these games. So then I started messing around with the content that we had and trying to put it into the campaign levels. And I was like, yeah, like no one's released ha the Halo campaign on Custom Edition. Like, I'll be release it and it'll be really cool. Like no one's done it, so I'll do it. And I'm like, I can throw in some cool Halo PC mods and stuff too, like texture packs that change the HUD or change the textures. Then looking back on it, it's bad stuff. Like there's like the corrugated like metal steel diamond floors and it's all over the Forerunner environments and it like doesn't make any sense. But it was like, yeah, it's new, so it's cool. And I posted some screenshots of like some different shaders on like the elites and some different textures uh, and a broken heads up display. And people are like, oh, like that's cool. Like you should take this battle rifle with the grenade launcher I was working on. And like, yeah, and I took the nozzle off the flamethrower and put a chain gun. Let's put that on there. And we just started throwing tons of random shit into the campaign, you know, kind of hoping for the best, just like, what cool stuff can we do? Like, can we make the pelican shoot at shit as it flies around? Oh, we can? Yeah, yeah, that'll be cool. How does that affect the level? Who cares? It's cool. There's gonna be missiles raining down on this guy. And we did that whole thing in maybe about six months. And we released it on June 25th. And I wasn't expecting it to be that big. This guy, his name was Dirty DJ. Uh, gave us hosting on this website, Halo Impulse. So I wake up the next day, there's like all these bugs people are reporting. And I mean, this was a real shoddy thing we threw together. Like we weren't expecting it to be big. We were expecting like a hundred people to download it. It's on the front page of Bungie.net. We were the biggest mod for a Halo custom edition. And uh, the way we compiled the maps meant that they weren't very data efficient. And this poor guy, Dirty DJ, ended up with a $2,000 overage for his website bill, because we went through that much bandwidth. It was, you can imagine the chaos that would happen when people are going to one website, not for the website, but for one specific project that dominates and overpopulates everything else, especially when that project really isn't all that good. I mean, you always have people, you know, the range of what, what is good, you know, and is our project good is something that gets debated because it's not exactly original. We're just revising the campaign, adding stuff in there. So we always had, people in the Halo C community divided on whether they liked our project or not. You know, it's uh, last I checked, which was maybe a year and a half ago, like total lifetime recorded downloads, basically off halomatch.org and our own releases, is over 2 million downloads, which is crazy. Even if some of those projects are total crap, you know, the fact that we all worked on stuff that over, you know, got over 2 million downloads, you know, isn't something many people can say.
Lemuria, to give you an oversight of the development, is split into two episodic parts, kind of like Half-Life. Nobody had, at that point, really taken the uh, idea of creating their own single-player campaign with full-fledged voice acting uh, and all of that stuff. So we decided that that's what we were gonna do. And uh, we planned out uh, the encounters and we basically decided that we wanted to make a full expansion from the original Halo as something that could stand uh, on its own that would seem like it was downloadable content for the original Halo game. But we had some other people help us. Uh, another guy, his name was Kevin. Um, online, he would go by Lodex. And us two, we were in charge of creating the environments, uh, which were called BSP in uh, Halo Custom Edition. And uh, we were also in charge of creating the encounters and the plot. Uh, another guy, his name was uh, Matthew McCracken. He did all of the cinematics. Um, and then we had a whole slew of uh, voice actors who did voices for all the characters. Um, we had some people who did the, for example, some additional environment art, uh, skyboxes, stuff like that. But this was a worldwide effort spanned countries. Uh, for example, my friend Kevin, who I, I still talk to almost every day, um, he lives in Belgium. So he's, you know, all the way over there we had to deal with, you know, like time zone difference and stuff while working on the project. Uh, another friend, Sahir, he lives in, or he did live in Chicago, for example, so he's behind. Um, but everybody was scattered around. It's not like everybody was like here getting together to build something. It was wherever on the internet connecting to each other and, and building this thing. We had a whole team. Um, our whole credits are on the lemuriac.com website. It was around a year development time for the first part and uh, it was very well received by the community. So we decided, all right, we got to finish this story and we decided to make part two. That took a little bit longer in time to create uh, and we finished that at the end of 2012. It was a long process, uh, sort of like the projects I do now. It was all stuff I did in my free time among school. Um, but I think the gameplay is as true to original Halo's encounters and even some of like the later Halo games um, that we could possibly get it to be. But our inspirations for it sort of ranged from some of the other notable single player maps because before then there wasn't really big ones, but there was some. Uh, there's one that's called Cleanup. That one was very cool. You played as an elite and you fought a flood, which I thought was a very interesting concept. Um, the SPV3 and SPV2 mods, those were, SPV2, while I think we were doing Lemuria was a big one. But besides that, I mean, overall it was an incredible learning experience. I actually just downloaded it again last night for this, but uh, I looked at the downloads and there was like over 50,000 downloads on the halomaps.org website alone. And uh, I think for 2012 until they kept the, uh, the rating system going, it was like one of the highest rated uh, single player campaigns on Halo Maps. The whole modding scene was uh, really cool for kind of getting the toes wet for game development. Now, granted, game development is quite quite different because you have a goal. Game modding is kind of like a person that works on a uh, old uh, sports car at home. They go home and get off work and go work on that. They're doing what they want to do. That's kind of what game modding was. Like you're doing what you want to do. My initial reason for getting into modding was I want to make something that I enjoy. And when other people started enjoying it, it started to become, well, I want to create something that I'm really proud of people to enjoy, that people have a lot of fun with. It is really interesting interacting with all these random people, strangers over the internet. You know, you hear your, your parents say, it's like, don't talk to people on the internet. They're really bad. They're all trying to get you. And it's like, no, they're not. They're just trying to do the same things you are. They're all making, you know, other maps and mods and they're, they're trying to do their own thing. And I think it's really cool when a community comes together to do things like that. They all have a shared interest, and in this case, it's Halo. And while there's drama, because, you know, we're all like, at that time, we were all growing up, we were all like teenagers, basically. It's fun to see everybody come together for that, that shared interest. Even if it's just one person tinkering on a thing, I think it's, it's going to continue. You know, you see people playing, uh, you know, Counter-Strike, Doom, or what have you. So long as there's enough people to kind of keep a ball rolling, there's going to be a, a scene, however small or however big. So I don't think it'll ever really, really die. Halo's 
for me at least, I mean, that's how I got into video games and how I got into video game development. So Halo is sort of the entry point to all of that for me. And uh, Halo Custom Edition is how I got into basically like modding communities and making games. Uh, so when I think about Halo, my fondest memory goes back to Halo Custom Edition. During that time, I was also very big into like actually playing multiplayer. I was, uh, they had groups that, like teams that would play, not like MLG or anything, but like we would all play, we would have tournaments and stuff. It was a lot of fun just getting together to play all these custom map creations that the community has built. I think, I think that brings back the most, the most fond memories that I have during that time, like coming together as a community, not just like building maps and being on like Halo maps and stuff. But coming together to play everybody's creations, I think, is something really special. That's the thing. I think that's another really cool aspect of game development and modding communities in general, is that you get people from all walks of life that you didn't know about these people before, and you have no idea what to expect, and you, you learn about these people, these strangers, over the internet, and you get to know them really, really well.